Frank, I know one of your favorite pastimes is riling up the good people of Vancouver and Brock <laughs> Besser. Come on down because you are now number six on Frank Saravalli's trade list and trade targets. Brad Brock Besser has a $7.5 million qualifying offer coming his way. Does that fit within the Canucks future plans? I don't think it does. Uh, and I think that's really the long and short of why he ends up on this list. I mean, you look at the season that he's had and no one has really gotten a bigger bump from Bruce Boudreau being on the bench than Brock Besser. 10 goals in 21 games since Boudreau took over. And, you know, it's been interesting to watch him be rejuvenated just because Boudreau came in and you remember his press conference. That was one of the first people or players that he targeted saying, we're going to get this guy turned around and they've done it. But the question is, how are the Canucks going to clear salary cap space moving forward? You don't have to read very far between the lines of Jim Rutherford and his comments over the last number of weeks and or months since taking over. That's his top priority. His top goal is to create some space and some flexibility moving forward. If you're uncertain about Brock Besser and his play, which I think it's fair to say that the Canucks have been given his somewhat limited contributions in the sense that he scores and when he scores, that's great. But if not, what else are the Canucks getting out of Brock Besser and his game? Well, the fact that he's due a $7.5 million qualifying offer this summer and he's arbitration eligible really puts the Canucks in a spot where they better be willing to pony up uh, and, and pay Brock Besser. And I'm not certain or sold that they are. I don't think they're certain or sold that they are. And when you look at JT Miller, and if you're, if you're, it's probably unfair to compare the two. They're in the same lineup now. But if you look at your situation moving forward on your cap, Mike, and you've got JT Miller at five and a quarter for next season, and you have that cost certainty, and you probably want to keep one of these players and trade the other. Do you value Miller more and, and the total and complete package of his game and all that he brings at five and a quarter or Besser at 7.5? I don't think it's much of a debate there. I think the, you know, not trying to rile up the Canucks fan base because it's easy to do, but I think that they would mostly agree as well. So um, that's sort of the, the proposition that the Canucks are, are staring down and they've been engaged in conversation with multiple teams about Brock Besser. We'll see where this goes. I think at this point, given the conversation around Besser, that it seems more likely that Besser is on the move than Miller. It is possible, I guess, that they move both, but I doubt it. Seems like it's a pretty safe bet at this point with the Chicago Blackhawks. They're not going to make playoffs. They're going to be in sell mode. And number four on your list is Brandon Hagel. 23-year-old winger. He can skate, plays with some grit, has scoring touch. Are teams knocking down the door for his services towards the trade deadline? They are, but what they found is that the asking price is quite high. And understandably so, given that Brandon Hagel has been incredibly productive for the Hawks. You look at his season 14 goals, and teams are absolutely salivating over his contract. Mm -hmm. $1.5 million for each of the next two seasons for a guy that's 23. And so when you look at it, you say, well, why would the Chicago Blackhawks entertain moving Brandon Hagel if that's the case? And I think we should put in parentheses a little caveat here, Mike, in that we also don't know who's going to be the general manager of the Chicago Blackhawks moving forward. So that's certainly going to be part of the conversation. What does that person, whenever they're hired, think of Brandon Hagel and his fit moving forward? I can only tell you that the number of teams that have been engaged in contact with the Chicago Blackhawks over the last number of weeks uh, over Hagel and his availability have been significant. And a couple teams, the Calgary Flames, for instance, were a team that went deep on Brandon Hagel. They end up you know, transitioning and, and targeting Tyler Toffoli, uh, but the Toronto Maple Leafs have been in the mix, the New Jersey Devils. Um, there are certainly others that have been in conversation. I listed them in the story on dailyfaceoff.com. Uh, the Hawks are looking for a first round pick and a top flight prospect, um, you know, potentially maybe even more than that. So the interest is definitely there. We'll see if the Hawks pull the trigger. But the sense is that if they get the price that they're looking for, that they will move on from Hagel and his fantastic contract. You've got a couple goaltenders on your trade target board. Mark andre Fleury's first on the list, but shortly after him is Alexander Georgiev of the New York Rangers. He's previously stated that he really wants to have an opportunity at being a number one in the league that's not going to be easy on Broadway with Igor Shosturk and they're sharing the crease with him. What would it take to pry Georgiev out of the Big Apple? A lot. I mean, that's the other part of it is 
it, you know, it's not easy the spot that Georgiev is in, but it's also not easy the spot that the Rangers are in because, yes, Shesterkin has been unbelievable this season. You know, some would say that he is the front runner for the Vezina Trophy at this point. But when you look at Shesterkin and the year that he's had, you know, and, and just the, the position in general, teams want insurance. They want to know that they can turn to someone in a time of need if by injury or if their game somehow falters. And Georgiev is a great insurance piece, a great backup, uh, and fits perfectly with what the Rangers are doing. But at the same time, he's also probably so good that he's an expensive luxury that maybe the Rangers can't necessarily afford, not in terms of cap hit, but at least in terms of the interest that's out there. The Rangers, you know, in, in part of that conversation would also be looking for a backup goalie that they could trust and feel comfortable in. Uh, in addition, if they're going to move Alexander Georgiev, there are teams calling. We mentioned the Vegas Golden Knights in our report earlier this week about Marc-Andre Fleury. Um, you know, I, I think it's a 50-50 question at this point as to whether Georgiev is on the move. And if it's not now, then it's going to be in the offseason. And I think the same thing with uh, Junis Corposalo as well in Columbus. As a pending unrestricted free agent, I have a very hard time believing that Corposalo ends up uh, on the Columbus Blue Jackets past the March 21st deadline. I, I don't know why they would let him walk for nothing. So keep an eye on Corposalo, keep an eye on Georgiev, and of course, uh, keep an eye on Mark andre Fleury as well. Great job, great job as always, Frank. Icebreaker is always my favorite time of the week. And of course, delivered by DoorDash. When you look right below us here, you can see that promo code DFODD or DFODDUS if you're in the United States. It's going to get you 25% off and free delivery on your first order. Great job, Frank.